Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. Previously, we talked about Staph aureus, Staph epidermidis, Staph saprophyticus, Streptococcus pyogenes, the very dense group of Streptococci. And in the last video, we talked about Streptnumo, the diseases and the characteristics. Today, we'll take you to the next level on how to diagnose and manage Streptococcus pneumoniae. So let's get started. This is my microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. Please watch these videos in order. Let's review. Streptococcus pneumoniae is a gram-positive coccus that is catalase negative. It is alpha hemolytic, sensitive to uptoken, and soluble in bile. It's a gram-positive coccus. Sometimes it appears in pairs. We call it diplococci, or short chains. Most of the time they appear purple, i.e. gram-positive. But old colonies do not stain well, and they can appear pink, as if they are gram-negative. Streptococcus pneumonia does not have catalase. It cannot defend itself against hydrogen peroxide. That's why it does not grow on any medium. It requires the medium to provide catalase for her because she lacks catalase. And what's the name of that medium that will provide catalase? Blood and blood products, i.e. Streptococcus is picky, fastidious. It prefers to grow on enriched medium supplemented with blood products to give you some robust, large colonies. But if you disrespect her and do not provide blood, i.e. you provided something like chocolate, it can grow but with smaller colonies. Streptococcus pneumonia is alpha hemolytic. Ever wonder why? Because it has pneumolysin, which is a hemolysin, which will break down lysis, hemoglobin, hemo. And when you break down hemoglobin, what do you get? Billy Verdon. Say it again, Billy Verdon. What does verd mean? Verd or vert means green. That's why it's alpha hemolytic, green color. Streptococcus pneumonia is a glucose fermenter, ferments glucose into lactic acid. That's why it cannot survive in high glucose environments. Why not? Because too much glucose equals too much lactic acid production, and lactic acid is a freaking acid, it's gonna kill the bacteria. Don't forget that Streptococcus pneumoniae is encapsulated, and the capsule is the most important virulence factor. Do we have other virulence factor other than the capsule? Sure, we have the peptidoglycan, tachoic acid, and phosphorylcholine. All of them are parts of the cell wall. And we have two enzymes. Pneumolysin is number one, amidase is number two. What are the diseases caused by Streptococcus pneumonia? Meningitis, otitis media, pneumonia, and sinusitis. So hey, Medicosis, I'm trying to diagnose pneumococcal meningitis and confirm it. You can do a sample of the cerebrospinal fluid, or you can take a biopsy. How about otitis media? Take a sample from the middle ear. If you take a sample from the external ear, it is useless. How about pneumonia then? The productive cough with rusty colored sputum tinged with blood? You can take a sputum sample. You can perform a bronchoalveolar lavage. You can do a biopsy. Since meningitis and pneumonia can be complicated by or caused by bacteremia, you can do blood cultures. But since otitis media and sinusitis usually do not cause bacteremia, please do not try to culture the blood in cases of otitis or sinusitis. Do you remember my previous video on Streptococcus pyogenes? What did Strep pyogenes say? She said, I love riches, I like blood, but I hate too much sugar. Streptococcus pneumonia will dance on the same rhythm. I love riches, I like blood, I hate too much sugar, because I am glucose fermenter, I will convert it into lactic acid, too much lactic acid is gonna kill me. That's why high sugar is a preservative, so to speak. How do we diagnose any freaking bacteria? Medicosis has a system. It's either microscopy, culture, NAAT, which is a DNA test, identification, or detection. You can detect the antigen, a part of the bacteria, or your antibody against the bacteria. 
This was the diagnosis for Streptococcus pyogenes discussed before. Please pause and review. Now let's talk about diagnosis of Streptococcus pneumonia. But first, please recall the diseases meningitis, otitis, pneumonia, sinusitis. Bacteremia can happen with meningitis or pneumonia. Let's diagnose that. Microscopy culture. NAAT identification and detection. Microscopy. Take a sample look under the microscope. Gram positive cocci arranged in pairs, i.e., diplococcus or short chains, surrounded by unstained capsule. Because the capsule does not have the peptidoglycan, antichoic acid, and stuff like that, the capsule does not stain with gram stain. Recall that older cultures may appear pink. That's why the culture is going to be fresh to make Gordon Ramsay happy. The joke is getting old. When should I use this gram stain in cases of meningitis and pneumonia? All right, medicosis, I saw gram positive cocci arranged in pairs or short chains. However, medicosis, don't forget that we have gazillion streptococci out there. How can I confirm that this was actually streptococcus pneumoniae and not any other strep? You can confirm the diagnosis with a Quellung reaction. What the flip is Quellung? It's German for swelling. Oh, swelling of what? Of the bacterial capsule. What does that mean? Here's how you do it. You bring the stinking Streptococcus pneumonia, that's your bacteria, and then you add anti-capsular antibodies. You mean antibodies that will try to attack the capsule? That's right. Lump them together, stick them on a slide, slide it under the microscope. Look and see. Seeing is believing. Did you see increased refractiveness around the bacteria? Oh yeah, I saw that. What does that mean? It means that your antibodies recognize the capsule that surrounds the bacteria. That's why you see increased refraction around the bacteria. And that's a positive Quellung reaction confirming that this stinking bug was Streptococcus pneumoniae. Technically, it's not a bug, it's a bacterium, I get it. But hey, medicosis, what if I saw nothing, no change? That's a negative Quellung reaction, which means this was probably not Streptococcus pneumoniae. Next, can I do culture? Of course. What medium should I use? Enriched nutritional medium supplemented with blood or blood products. Do not use high concentration of glucose because lactic acid will kill it. If you plan on giving antibiotics, please bring me the sample before you prescribe antibiotics. Because once you give the patient antibiotics, you will destroy the bacteria and ruin the culture results. So please, culture first, then you do the antibiotics, doofus. You can culture the tissue, you can culture the blood in cases of bacteremia, which is only true with meningitis and pneumonia. Can I do the nucleic acid amplification test? That's right, it is way faster than culture. However, in real life, it is rarely used for clinical cases of streptococcus pneumoniae. Next, identification, biochemical tests. What are you trying to see? You can look the, for the group-specific carbohydrates, or you can do optoken test or biosolubility test. Let's start with optoken. Of course, you know that streptococcus pneumonia is sensitive to optoken. However, strep viridans is resistant to optoken. Since we're talking about streptococcus pneumonia today, if you add optoken to the petri dish, optoken will destroy the streptococcus pneumonia. And you see this nice streptococcus pneumonia growing, the purple color? Yeah. What is that? It is surrounded by an area that does not have streptococcus pneumonia. Who killed the streptococcus pneumonia on this surrounding area? The freaking optoken that you give. And this is called an inhibition zone or a zone of inhibition. Okay, medicosis, can I do the bile test? Yes, it's called the bile solubility test. And since streptococcus pneumonia is bile soluble, once you add bile, just wait a few minutes and boom, you will dissolve and destroy the streptococcus pneumoniae. Last, you can detect the antigen. Don't forget the pneumococcal C polysaccharide, which is responsible for the C reactive protein production by the liver. That's why it's called CRP or C reactive protein. And this might be helpful in cases of meningitis or pneumonia. How about detecting antibodies? You detect your antibodies against the capsule of streptococcus pneumoniae. If you have antibodies against the capsule, that's a very good sign with relatively good prognosis. 
please watch my pneumonia video in my pulmonology playlist, especially the part where I compared between typical pneumonia and atypical pneumonia because the clinical presentation is different and the causative organisms are different. As you know, streptococcus pneumoniae is gonna cause typical pneumonia with sudden severe high-grade fever, cough that is productive of rusty colored sputum tinged with blood. Most patients will have low bar pneumonia unless you're very young or very old. In this case, you can get bronchopneumonia. How do I treat streptococcal pneumonia infection? If you do not want to memorize all of this, just remember, historically it was penicillin. But today, streptococcus pneumonia is resistant to penicillin, so we use something else, such as vancomycin and ceftriaxone together, the combo therapy. Okay, medicosis, I am a physician and I need to memorize, or I'm a last year medical student and I need to know this. So let's talk about pneumonia therapy when we suspect streptococcus pneumonia. First, you ask yourself, are we talking about an outpatient or inpatient? If we're talking about outpatient, ask yourself the next question. Do we have modifying factors or not? What the French toast is a modifying factor? This includes the following. Old age, i.e. older than 65. That's a risk factor. Patient who has received beta-lactams in the recent three months because he's more likely to have resistant to beta-lactam. That's a risk factor. Alcoholics, risk factor. Immunosuppressed people, risk factor. Being exposed to sick children, that's another risk factor. COPD, red flag. Diabetes, red flag. Kidney failure, heart failure, cancer. All of these are modifying factors. If they are absent, go ahead and give me azithromycin or clarithromycin. But if you find one or more of these modifying factors, now you gotta get serious. Give me respiratory quinolone such as levofloxacin. Hey, medicosis, can I give ciprofloxacin? Shut up. Ciprofloxacin is a quinolone, but it's not a respiratory quinolone. When you're trying to treat a respiratory disease, you gotta pick a respiratory quinolone gotta get serious here. If you want to learn more about quinolones, check out my antibiotics course on my website medicosisperfectionatus.com. All right, medicosis, do I have other options than respiratory quinolone? Yes, you can give me a beta-lactam plus one of the previous ones, azithro or clarithromycin. What kind of uh, beta-lactam should I use? You can give amoxicillin clavulinate. But if this stinking bacteria is penicillin resistant, you gotta switch to acephalosporin. Such as what? The best are cifpodoxime and cifuroxime. All right, medicosis, I'm talking about a patient who is hospitalized. For inpatient therapy for pneumococcal pneumonia, ask yourself, are we in the ICU or not? No, medicosis, we're not in the ICU. Then do exactly what we did for the outpatient with modifying factor, i.e. respiratory quinolone or a beta-lactam plus azithro or clithro. Indeed, medicosis, the patient is in the ICU. We're getting serious here. Then get me that respiratory quinolone, such as levofloxacin, plus a beta-lactam. Together? Yes, we're getting serious. Anytime you suspect MRSA, you add a vancomycin on top of this. You suspect pseudomonas, add anti-pseudomonal antibiotics to this regimen. Do you suspect influenza virus? Add a neuraminidase inhibitor to this regimen. Who else is gonna teach you microbiology like this? Your woke professor with his PowerPoint? Give me a break. Let's review my story of immunology. I've talked about this in detail in my immunology playlist. Here is a bacteria invading your body. This could be streptococcal pneumonia. When you take a piece of the bacteria, a piece is called the antigen. And then the antigen presenting cell will present the antigen to the customer. Who's the customer in the restaurant? Lymphocyte, usually T lymphocyte. T lymphocyte has many options. We can destroy the freaking bacteria. We can activate the B lymphocytes so that she can class switch and mature and become plasma cells and secrete antibodies such as IgM, IgA, IgG, IgE, or IgD. Third option is to make memory cells to remember this stinking bacteria so that if the bacteria came again in the future, the second response is going to be faster and stronger. Ergo, prophylaxis for streptococcus pneumoniae. 
First, avoid sick contact. If you know that a person is sick, don't get close to them. Next, we have vaccines. And there are two types of vaccines available against streptococcal pneumonia. Number one, the 23-valent pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine, abbreviated PPSV23, versus the 13-valent pneumococcal conjugated vaccine, PCV13. What the flip is the difference? The valency is different, which means this is covering 23 types of streptococcal pneumonia, but this one covers 13. However, the 13th one is stronger. I don't get it. Please explain. Sure, this has conjugated protein, on top of that vaccine. All right, so what do you mean? When you add a protein, this protein will be carried by the antigen presenting cell and presented to the T lymphocyte, which will get active. Where does the T lymphocyte live? In the thymus, i.e. thymus dependent. T lymphocyte can help her sister, other T lymphocytes, or her neighbor, B lymphocyte. When I help B lymphocyte, they will mature, they will class switch, giving me all kinds of antibodies. They will make plasma cells, they will make memory cells. And that's why this strong vaccine usually does not require a booster. Because you make memory cells, in most cases, they last for life. Contrast that with the Dufus PPSV23. Does not contain conjugated protein therefore does not activate the T lymphocyte, therefore is not thymus dependent, you can call it thymus independent if you want, no class switching, no memory, therefore it usually requires a booster. There are no solutions in life, there are only trade-offs. Ready for a wonderful streptococcal pneumonia mnemonic? Let's go, it is the C mnemonic. Streptococcal pneumonia is a pneumococcus, it's a coccus, it's a gram-positive coccus, when I ask you something, please answer in the positive or in the affirmative. Just say yes. Dear streptococcal pneumonia, are you sensitive to optoken? Yes, I am. I am sensitive to optoken. Are you soluble in bile? Yes, I am soluble in bile. When you do the bile solubility test, you'll find me very soluble and sensitive. What's your most important virulence factor? my polysaccharide capsule. Don't forget that I have that C polysaccharide, which activates your C reactive protein from your liver. Moreover, I have tachoic acid and phosphorylcholine. Tachoic acid is not unique. Phosphorylcholine is unique to streptococcal pneumonia. What diseases can you cause? Just draw a big humongous C across your body meningitis, otitis, sinusitis, bacteremia, and pneumonia. If you are a child or very old or have sickle cell disease, you are at risk of a severe pneumococcal infection and fulminant sepsis. Here is how you diagnose streptococcal pneumonia. Please pause and review. And this is how you treat it. Pause and review. Now let's put it all together by looking at these wonderful pictures at Picmonic. Streptococcal pneumonia, pneumonia, here is nude Mona Lisa. Pneumonia, nude Mona. Gram positive, here is the angel. Diplococcus, double cocked eye. Lancet shaped, here is the lancet. Catalase negative, negative cat. Sensitive to optoken, here is the sensitive octopus. Soluble in bile, bile soluble. Alpha hemolytic, here's the green color. Virulence factor is the polysaccharide capsule. Confirm with the positive coelung reaction, which is looking for the capsule. How does this bacteria evade your immune system? By the capsule and because it can destroy your IgA antibodies because she has IgA protease. What are the diseases caused by streptococcus pneumonia? Just remember the mnemonic MOPS. What's the M? meningitis, meningitis. What's the O? Otitis, oat, coming from my middle ear. What's the P? Pneumonia, here is nude Mona. What's the S? Sinusitis. Your exam will probably describe the rusty colored sputum, sepsis, especially if you removed your spleen or if you happen to have sickle cell anemia. If you like this video, you will adore my antibiotics course where you learn about penicillins, cephalosporins, quinolones, and others. Not just antibacterials, antifungals, antivirals, and antiparasitic drugs as well. You can also download my brand new surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectsnellis.com. Coming up next, enterococci. 
Until then, please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.